Uh, we have been looking at the issue of uh, justification by faith. And uh, I hope uh, that uh, the Lord will continue blessing us and uh, instructing us in his ways. I want us uh, in this session to look at uh, the topic uh, justification, the glory of Revelation chapter 18. Justification, the glory of Revelation chapter 18. And so I invite all of us, wherever we are viewing or in this place, for a word of prayer as we begin. Our Heavenly Father, we are indebted to you for every grace that we receive, every strength and uh, every power to walk in righteousness. And so I just uh, pray you continue teaching us and we enjoy uh, the merits of the blood of thy son. In this session, Lord, help us to understand even our obligation in such a time as this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so, justification, the glory of uh, Revelation chapter 18. Let us go to the book of Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. And uh, let us uh, read uh, verses 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with this glory. Yes, that after these things. And the cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the foundation of the devil, the form of every form. Thank you so much. And so in Revelation chapter 18, we find another angel coming down. We have the three angels' messages in Revelation chapter 14, which you understand them so well. And uh, the first angel is about fearing God and giving him glory. The second angel is about uh, the fall of Babylon. And uh, the third angel is uh, justification by faith. Uh, the third angel's message in verity, justification by faith. And uh, so when you read uh, Revelation chapter 18, you find that there is another angel, the fourth angel, which is actually the repetition of the previous messages because you find that it is saying Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Yet that was the second angel's message. The fall of Babylon could not be given in its fullness at the time of 1840s because there are additional mention of uh, the depravity of the churches are repeated uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 18. And so the, the most important thing in uh, Revelation chapter 18, I, I pray we settle. That is the most important thing. When you read Revelation chapter 18, how that angel begins that uh, it fills the whole earth with the glory of God. Why does the angel feel the glory, the whole earth with glory? We understand that justification is victor over sin. The third angel's message in verity is victor over sin, which is the faith of Jesus Christ. And what is the faith of Jesus Christ? To believe that Christ can save us humbly is the faith of Jesus Christ, amen? And so it is victor over sin. This is the third angel's message. And this is the glory that fills the earth, the whole earth. But why does the, uh, the glory fill the whole earth? Look at uh, 
Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 to 3. Yes, the reason why the glory of God is uh, illuminating so much in uh, Revelation chapter 18, it's because darkness is covering the world. Do you see that? So in the opposition of the darkness that is covering the world, what the Lord does, he makes his glory shine upon the earth. This is the heart of the message of justification. The filling of the earth with the glory of God. And uh, I'd like you to see something. This is the time that uh, the purpose will be at work. When Revelation chapter 18 is happening, it is when the purpose, which it is foundation is built on righteousness by works, will be so much at work. Uh, talking about uh, the work of the purpose. Uh, this is uh, the great controversy. Let me get you a reference. Great controversy. Page. Page 60, paragraph 2. Let us, let us read it. The timing of the glory of God covering the earth, which is the heart of the message, justification by faith, it is also the time that uh, the purpose will be at work. And so in opposition to the darkness of the purpose, there will be a people who will be standing for Christ. We are talking about justification, the glory of Revelation 18. Are we in GC 60.2? It says, but the noon of the purpose was the midnight of the world. The Holy Scriptures were almost unknown, not only to the people, but to the priests. Like the Pharisees of old, the papal leaders hated the light which would reveal their sins. What did the purpose hate? Are we together? What will the purpose hate? It passed everyone. Yes. And what is the third angel's message? What is its work? Victor over sin. So you find that at the noonday of the purpose, during that time of darkness, she will be opposed to victor over sin. And this is the heart of the message, justification, victor over sin, the glory of God shining in Revelation chapter 18. It is just the opposite of what the purpose wants to plunge the world in. So you come to understand that when you will be on the side of the purpose, there is no victor over sin, because that is what he hates, people having victor over sin. Why did the purpose hate victor over sin? Because she is a core vice president of Satan himself, and Satan is the author of sin. And he knows that the people who get victor over sin, where they are going, he has been where those who are overcomers are going. So the quote says, God's law, the standard of righteousness, having been removed, they exercise power without limit and practice vice without what? Restraint. All the world will be wandering after the beast. In what? In transgressing the law of God. And that is when the people of God shall shine. We are told that it is in the midnight that the stars, their lights are seen. Fraud, avarice, and uh, pro profilgacy uh, prevailed. Men shrank from no crime by which they could gain wealth or position. The palaces of popes and prelates were scenes of the vilest debauchery. 
Some of the reigning pontiffs were guilty of crimes so revolting that secular rulers endeavored to depose these dignitaries of the church as monsters too vile to be tolerated. And so this world is coming to a darkness and uh, the, the, the Lord's glory shall be revealed by the character of his people. Look at uh, 1SM. One SM. Page uh, 124.3. One twenty-four point three. We are in the great day of atonement. What is atonement for? Can we call us Daniel eight fourteen? I didn't say we open our Bibles. We call us it. Daniel eight fourteen. <laughs> Sometimes you can get Seventh day Adventist off guard. This is, this church was founded on that verse, is it? And the angel said unto me, unto 2,300 days, and then the sanctuary shall be. When you look at the margin, the sanctuary shall be justified. The sanctuary shall be restored. The sanctuary shall be restored it to it is rightful place the sanctuary shall be made whole again the sanctuary shall be cleansed which sanctuary yeah these are simple questions that we have to come in terms with this which, which sanctuary heavenly sanctuary and what made the heavenly sanctuary unclean That is where Christ went, but what made it unclean? The sins of the saints. So when the sanctuary is cleansed, who is cleansed? Yeah. The subjects of the kingdom are cleansed, is it? So unto 2,300 days, and then the sanctuary shall be justified, justification. And uh, that was on the day of atonement, is it? So atonement really is justification and the people who are justified are the comers they are in those who don't come there can they be justified no it is only those who come in the sanctuary that are justified is it so in the day of atonement that is when the sanctuary is justified that is when to seek the lord while he may be found because it will reach a time he will not be there for atonement he will come out of it and atonement doesn't continue anymore so 1SM 124.3, what does it say? Amen. So I, I want you to look at the quote once again, that uh, Satan has been seeking gradually to rob this message of its power. Which message? The justification message. Because unto 2,300 days and then the sanctuary shall be done what? Justified. So, uh, the Hebrew margin. Yeah. So, Satan has been trying to rob this message of, of its power, justification by faith. And why is he robbing the message of its power? What does, which is the reason given, brother Jao? Why is he trying to rob the message of its power? No, 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 I'm just asking why. 
is trying to rob the message of its power. It's open book test. So that you are not all prepared to do what? To stand. When Adam sinned, it was called what? The fall of man. So for Adam to stand, what does what must happen? Huh? <laughs> huh? Restoration. For him to stand, restoration must take place. Because you cannot be standing while sinning. Is it possible? No, no, no. The sinning is the falling of man. The standing is the victory over sin, the restoration. So the only way to stand in that day is justification to take place. And that is how the glory fills the whole earth. And it's in opposition with the darkness in Revelation chapter 18. So the glory of God that comes down is the total restoration. The message of the sanctuary being cleansed. Justification has taken place. And so this, we are told, I want you to read uh, the, just above 1SM 124.2. 1 SM 124.2. Yes, continue. If said the Lord of hosts. So what is Satan hindering? He's hindering. Uh, what is he hindering here? Conrad hearts, confession, and putting away of sin. So that what may happen, the rain may be poured down, the latter rain. So Satan is preventing Revelation chapter 18 happening by robbing the message of its power, justification. But if we will reach at a point that we are fully justified, then Revelation 18 will happen. It doesn't have to wait for 10 years. The Lord has just to have a people who can be able to put away sin, to approach him with subdued hearts, confess, and claim his promises. Then it will come. Zechariah 10.1. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Now, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Brethren, I want to ask you, according to this verse, can we know the time of the latter rain? How many are sure? Brother Njau is sure. Can we know the time of the latter rain? According to the verse. In the time, so it can be understood, is it? But why are we waiting for the time of the latter rain? Has it has the time come or has it not come? In the day of atonement, that time had come, because that is when sins are put away and the rain is showered upon the people. Another element that shows that the time of the latter rain has come is because of the wickedness that is in the world. Because as the wickedness increases, the people of God must arise to oppose it. So the wickedness is opposed. So it says that, uh, go back to Isaiah chapter 6. I want you to 
I want you to see that uh, actually we can understand the time of the latter rain. Just go back to Isaiah 60, where you have written down. Yes, Isaiah 60. Yes. And the glory of the Lord is written upon thee. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So when is when do God expect to give his latter rain? What is that time? Sorry. When is that time? An open book test, verse 2. An open when book test. When the darkness is covering the world, the Lord is willing to outpour his glory upon the world. So why are we waiting for that such a special thing to ask for the latter rain? You see how we miss it? And when you look at 1888, something was happening that made the people realize this was the time, actually. And what was happening at that time in 1888, we had the Blair Law, Sunday Law. We had nations preparing for great things. We had Adventists being persecuted at that time. And then the brethren understood this is not an ordinary time. This is the time to seek the Lord. And then he brought the message in Minneapolis, 1888, to counter the darkness that was happening. But because the people of God were not prepared, the Lord had to use Etijones to go to the parliament against the law that was being passed for, uh, the Sunday law that was being passed. If the law could have been passed, you know, Sister I talks about, it's almost only 50 people were prepared at that time in that conference, yeah. and at most three. Because others were not sure of what was happening. Others were confused. There are those who are actually against the message. There are those who are confused. And there were only like five people. That is uh, Willie White, E.G. White, uh, E.T. Jones, Wagona, and Haskell who were prepared, who were actually sounding the message. Those were the only active people, but the other ministers, were, others were confused. Around 50 people were confused at that time. And the whole Adventist church now was in darkness. So the movement that started with around 200,000 people, by the time we reached 1888, only 50 people were like, they are understanding, others are still in confusion, what is coming to the world. And so the, the, the law is in the parliament being discussed to be passed, and the Lord looks at his church and says, no, this cannot be. And he goes in, into the presence of the father and says, my blood, my blood, my blood. And then the angel is sent from heaven downwards to tell the other angels who are about to release the uh, seven last plagues, hold on, hold on. And then the Lord withholds the plagues that were coming. Serious stuff. So we are living in spare time. Probationary time. The match is always 90, 90 minutes, football. Only what you have is another time, extra time, which is not your time because there is, uh, when I used to watch football, there was this extra time that was given to a match, which was not even an extra time. It was an extra time, but if any team scores a goal, well, the match ends there and there. Yeah, that is the thing. And the Lord is so gracious that he doesn't give such a probation, extended probation. And so we are living in a time where we don't have to be careless with what is happening. We have to be so attentive to what is happening. We don't have to walk as children off the darkness. Yeah. And so Satan is wanting to have his way to rob this message of his power to prevent Revelation chapter 18 happening. And the Lord has been patient enough. And so we are told the enemy of man and God is not willing that this truth, justification by faith, should be presented. Because if it is presented, the church will awake to the times that it's living in. And it will come out of this blindness that is, it is in. For he knows that if the people receive it fully, his power will be broken. This is Review and Herald, September 3, 1889. And... Uh, I want you to search for me this quote, which talks about our present position is 
interesting and perilous. Our present position is interesting and perilous. This is uh, It is in uh, what? Prevent Herald, September 3, 1889, paragraph 20. I always try to look for uh, another simple reference. RH, September 3, 1889. This is just after 1888. Listen to what she says. Re September 3, 1889, paragraph 20. September 3, 1889, paragraph 20. Shall I go ahead and read it? It says, our present position is interesting and perilous. The danger of refusing light from heaven should make us watchful unto prayer, lest we should any of us have an evil heart of unbelief. When the lamp of God was crucified on Calvary, the death knell of Satan was sounded. And if the enemy of truth and righteousness can obliterate from the mind the thought that it is necessary to depend upon the righteousness of Christ for salvation, he will do it. If he can bring a wall or a cloud or a veil that your righteousness depends on Christ, then he will do it. If Satan can succeed in leading man to place value upon his works as works of merit and righteousness, he knows that he can overcome him by his temptation and make him his victim and prey. Lift up Jesus before the people. Strike the doorpost with the blood of Calvary's lamb and you are safe. So this message had to go all over the four corners of the world. And so one thing you have to notice is that Satan is unwilling that the message of righteousness by faith should go forth because it will prepare the church for the harvest. If the truth is received by the people, the power of Satan is broken because he has taught men to depend on men. Be it an educational system, financial system, in the food industry, dress industry, Satan has taught men to look at men in every system that exists in this world. But if people can be pointed to Christ to break forth these things, then he knows that his power is broken. And he has brought unbelief amongst the people, even the present truth believers, so that they may not grasp the message of righteousness by faith. It is his work to counteract the work of Jesus Christ in the most holy place the work of Saturn. And you, you understand that vision in early writing page uh, 14 downwards, uh, where it says that uh, Christ moved from the holy place into the most holy place, and then Saturn sat in between there to try to do the work of Jesus Christ. And so instead of the people going inside, they were going backward. Yes. Have you, it is in early writing. They could pray, Father, give us your spirit. Uh, that is early writing, early writing from page 54. Yes. <clears throat> 55.1. It says, I saw the father rise from the throne and in a flaming chariot go into the holy of holies within the veil and sit down. Then Jesus rose up from the throne and the most of those who were bowed down arose with him. I did not see one ray of light pass from Jesus to the careless multitude after he arose and they were left in perfect darkness. Those who arose when Jesus did kept their eyes fixed on him as he left the throne and led them out a little way. 
Then he raised his right arm and we heard his lovely voice saying, which here I'm going to receive my father. I'm going to my father to receive the kingdom. Keep your garments spotless. And in a little while, I'll return from the wedding and receive you to myself. Then a cloudy chariot with wheels like flaming fire surrounded by angels came to where Jesus was. He stepped into the chariot and was born to the holiest where the father sat. There I beheld Jesus, a great high priest, standing before the father. On the hem of his garment was a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate. Those who rose with Jesus will send up their, up their faith to him in the holiest and pray, my father, give us thy spirit. Then Jesus will breathe upon them the Holy Ghost. In that breath was light, power, and much love, joy, and peace. Now listen to this scene that follows. I turned to look at the company who are still bowed before the throne. That is in the holy place. They did not know what Jesus, they did not know that Jesus had left it. Satan appeared to be by the throne, trying to carry on the work of God. Since 1844, Satan has been there trying to carry out the work of God. And what does he do? I saw them look up to the throne and pray, Father, give us thy spirit. Satan will breathe then, Satan will then breathe upon them an unholy influence. In it there was light and much power, but no sweet love, joy, and peace. There was no fruit of the spirit, which means they did not have victor over sin. Satan was carrying out a work in the holy place. Because people had rejected to move from the holy place into the most holy place. And what does it mean to move from the holy place into the most holy place, having victory over sin, being justified, attending the meeting on the day of atonement? You see, others decide that they will attend the meeting of the day of atonement in the camp, not at the appointed place. And you know how we attend the day of atonement meeting in the camp while you come and you say you are told you have to do this and you go against it you are told go this way and this is you, you rebel against it you are you are attending the day of atonement meeting in the camp not in the holy most holy place and so it is rebellion that satan has actually uh, perfected in uh, creating in the hearts of the people of God. And so we have a challenge of uh, the message of Revelation chapter 18. In uh, 1888, when this message was brought, this is what uh, she says. Uh, I begin uh, I, I believe it is in the 1888 messages, uh, the time of loud cry has just upon us. Yes, go to 1888 materials, page 1073, paragraph seven. We are talking about justification, the message of Revelation 18. Justification and the message of Revelation chapter 18. Or the glory of Revelation chapter 18. Are we there? 1888, 1073.7. Go ahead and read it. Let everyone who claims to believe that the Lord is soon coming search the scriptures as never before, for Satan is determined to try every device possible to keep souls in darkness and blind the mind to the perils of the times in which we are living. Let every believer take up his Bible with earnest prayer that he may be enlightened by the Holy Spirit as to what is true that he may know more of God and of Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Search for the truth as for hidden treasures and disappoint the enemy. The time of test is just upon us for the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ. The sin, the, the sin pardoning redeemer. This is the beginning of the light of the angel 
glory shall fill the whole earth, for it is the work of everyone to whom the message of warning has come, to lift up Jesus, to present him to the world as revealed in types, as shadowed in symbols, as manifested in the revelations of the prophets, as unveiled in the lessons given to his disciples and in the wonderful miracles wrought for the sons of men. Such the scriptures for the earth a, so in 1888, that angel came down, is it? It says, the time of test is just upon us for the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ, sin, pardon, and redeemer. This is the beginning of the light of the angel whose glory shall fill the whole earth. Which, which angel is this? The fourth angel's message, Revelation 18, is it? Yes. And so the time had come, the time of test had come upon them. When all this push of the Sunday laws and all these things were going on, let us have a day of rest. And we see them, we see the BLM, they are doing their work and they are trying to bring people to morality and going against what is happening around the world. And you think that, uh, oh, these people are just doing a good work and all that. No, the Lord is opening people's eyes to tell them that this thing is about to happen. And it is a time to receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Because you see the events that are happening and uh, the distribution of wealth, capitalism, and all these things. These are the events that are bringing in the climax of everything. And the Lord is looking upon his people to understand that the time of test is just upon us. And the revelation of Christ's character, the, the character of Christ has to be revealed in his people. That is how important the message of justification is, that it even points us to the time of the great trouble that is coming upon the world. And so the Lord is calling upon his people to awake and understand the times that they are living in. Almost alarming in character are the statements that we hear in these messages and the events that we see happening. But who is there awake to make sure that the church of God are fed with meat in due season? No, what we hear on the pulpits every now and then and even what we have majored in in such a time as this cannot help somebody to stand. I'll be writing 63. This famous quote. In fact, this quote, every Adventist should memorize it. I saw the necessity of the messengers, especially watching and checking all fanaticism, wherever they might see it arise. Satan is pressing in on every side, and unless we watch for him and have our eyes open to the devices and snares, we'd have on the what? Paul, armor of who? Of God. The fiery darts of the wicked will hit us. And then she goes ahead and says, what? There are many precious truth contained in the word of God, but it is what? That the flock needs now. We are distracted with messages and the things that are not present truth to the flock. I have seen the danger of the messengers running off from the important points of what? To dwell upon subjects that are calculated, not calculated to unite the flock and do what? Sanctify the soul, justification. Satan will here take every possible advantage to do what? To injure our cause. Then she says, but subjects as what? In connection with what? The commandment of God and the faith of Jesus are perfectly calculated to explain the past Advent movement and show what our present position is, establish the faith of the doubting and give satanity to the glorious future. 
This I have frequently seen were the principal subjects on which the messengers should dwell. Why the sanctuary in connection with 2300 days? Why should it be dwelt on? Justification until 2300 days and then the sanctuary shall be justified. This is the subject that she says should be dwelt on if we will want to defeat the enemy. Because as we sound it in every corner, the whole earth will be lightened with the glory of God. What God is waiting is for the whole world to be lightened with his glory. And how is this world to be lightened with his glory? And to 2,300, then the sanctuary shall be restored, shall be justified, shall be made whole, shall be restored into its rightful place. Justification, the glory of Revelation 18. This is what the Lord is waiting for us. She says that the loud cry of the third angel has begun in the revelation of the character of God. This was in 1888, but we are 176 years past the time. And so we are told angels are hurrying to and fro in heaven, seeking those whom they will impart the truth of the time. Are we awake enough to be able to receive the message and impart it to others? You remember what Christ says in, uh, uh, let me see, is it in John chapter five or John chapter six? He says in John, let me see. Out of his bellies. This is John chapter seven from uh, 37 to 39. Let us go to John chapter 7, verses 37 to verses 39. We, we, we are told that the angels of God are uh, going to and fro, seeking those whom they can impart light so that they may impart on uh, others. Go ahead and read the book of John. The last day. So when you read the book of John chapter 7 verses 37 to 39 you find that in the last day, that great day of the feast, this was the feast of uh, the tabernacles, is it? Yes, and Christ is talking to them. And even pointing to the last days that he is willing to outpour his spirit upon his church. He that believeth on him, then out of his belly shall flow forth rivers of living water. And when we receive from him, we become streamlets of the same. And so it's not just having a message, but actually living out the life that you become a streamlet of the same. It's not just by preaching. And so this he spake of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. And when we talk about believe, it's not just an accent to the truth, a, tree, a, 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 a lip service but an experiential knowledge of what you are hearing and what you are propagating. And so the angels are willing to outpour the spirit. An angel has to come down from, uh, from heaven to earth. Now, when they come, who are these who are prepared? Only those who are justified. They are filled with the spirit of boldness and they go forth conquering to conquer. 
and they will rise above the attitudes of men, the present attitudes of the church, family, and a great power and glory will be imparted to them. It will light the whole world with the glory of God. And so while the work of salvation is closing, trouble will be coming on the earth and the nations will be angry. Yet the Lord holds in check all these movements so that his children may be prepared to do a work that has never been done. The, uh, the book of uh, Daniel chapter 12. We are talking about the justification, the glory of Revelation 18. The book of Daniel chapter 12. But one. And at that time, shall Michael stand up the great king who standeth for the kingdom of the people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. There was a nation even to that same time, and to that time thy people shall be like everyone that shall be found written in the book. Amen. So if the time that is coming is a time of trouble that has never been, what kind of preparation has to be made? A preparation that has never been. More serious than ever. If, the, if you see, you only prepare according to the magnitude of the problem. You go searching for a million shillings to buy a bicycle. No. You don't do that. You don't go into the pain of searching a million shillings to buy a bicycle. You will only go for a million if you want a Mercedes or something next to that. So if the trouble before us is greater than what has ever been there, then it means that the exhibition of the faith should be greater than what has never been there. Now, not even Job went through the great time of trouble. Yet, when you start reading the book of Job, you close your eyes and you, you are not even seeing Job. <laughs> Have everyone read the book of Job with closed eyes? You read and you close your eyes a little bit, you let the sins pass a little and then you continue reading. Now, Job did not go through the great time of trouble. We are being told it will be a great time of trouble that has never been. But that doesn't have to, to make anyone fear. Do you know that? Yeah, because the power they'll be possessing is more than what Job was possessing. Job did not live in the great day of atonement. We are living in the great day of atonement, where actually the power bestowed upon these people in Revelation chapter 18 is more power than what Job had at that time. Yes. They'll be able to go through this time. And you read the, the, the Reformation period where actually the people like John Haas, were, were, were burned at stake and their bodies became ashes while they are singing and you wonder how can a person, the body turn into ashes while they are still singing? The time is coming. And people say, no, Lord, rest me before that time. I cannot, I cannot go through this. It means that you cannot vindicate the character of God at that time. We should be praying that, Lord, let thy will happen. If I live for your glory, if I die for your own glory, Christ prays that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If this cup can be taken away, let it be done what? But not according to my will, but according to what? This is the prayer of the people who have been filled with the spirit of God. People that are experiencing the fullness of justification. But because we still have some things still cherished in our life, such a prayer is uh, strange to us. We will rather want to go through the easy tunnel to heaven rather than th go through tribulations with uh, Christ. But this is just a show that we really don't know our finality. If we are sure of our final destination, then we shouldn't be afraid of these things. And so uh, as we enter into the last minutes, the days which we live in are eventful and full of peril. The signs of the coming of the end are thickening around us and how can the world, the church, show the world that it is prepared to go forth shining terrible as the sun and the moon, clad in the armor of Christ's righteousness? The church should go forth shining. And then, you know what? 
she asked this in great controversy. I think it's from page uh, 50 onward. She says, why does persecution still linger to come into the church of God? What do you think persecution still lingers? Because the church has been conformed to what? They were, and they wonder why persecution lingers. She says that let the church arise and do or just look like Jesus Christ and then persecution will come. We don't have to wait for persecution. Just live like Christ. In fact, in Timothy, we are told that those who want to live godly will suffer what? Persecution. And with, yes, go ahead and read that. GC? GC 48. Yeah, GC 48.3. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Will be king. How, how many love will love persecution? How many loves persecution? How many wants persecution? No one wants persecution. Well, that that means only you know we talk in opposites. If you don't want persecution, you don't want purity. Let the church arise and be pure, and then persecution will be done. What? Rekindle. So when you say you don't like, Metri, I quote you. If you say you don't like persecution, then it means what you don't want is purity. I know that's not what you mean, but persecution is bad, is it? Yes. But what can only bring persecution is pure faith, having the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We are told that Christ was hated with his brethren because of his pure life. And shall we expect less? less? Is the servant greater than the master? No. We can't expect less, we have to expect the same. And so this is not a fearful message. This is a message of joy to the church. While it has been made to look like it's a message of gloominess, a message of uh, hopelessness. And so it is hidden from the church. When you talk about the church being pure, you hear people say, oh, you are depriving us of uh, 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 being free enjoying our lives and all that. Huh? You hear people talk, Ay, this guy is so much, this woman is so much. Until people are called LNG White when they dress well, others are called some names when they try to do reformation. People think that they are being deprived of their freedom to live as they would want. Yet they say we are waiting for Jesus Christ. Let the church arise and have justification in themselves. Then you'll see what you have been waiting for. Don't just keep on saying, I, we want Jesus Christ to come. No, live the life of Jesus Christ and you will see if he doesn't come. It is a challenge to every one of us then to end the work in the heavenly sanctuary. Can we be able to end it? The work in the heavenly sanctuary? Who has employed Jesus Christ? We have employed him. How do have we employed him? In a very worse way, retaining him there with our sins, is it? How do we end his job there? Stop sending sin there. And Jesus will say, there they are. I'm going for them. I can't sit here any longer. He has to come down. We are not just to wait for the coming of Jesus Christ. We are to hasten it. Is it? That is what Peter says. We don't have just to wait for the coming of Jesus Christ. How do we hasten it? Live a sinless life, a victorious life. Our work is to be accomplished. A work of cleansing the soul from sin. 
Every other doctrine will be swallowed in this, Christ our righteousness. Every other doctrine will be done what? Swallowed. And what will attend to this message? The efficacy of the merits of the blood of the Son of God. There's nothing that the Christian should desire apart from the cleansing of his soul temple so that Christ may find a, a dwelling place, an abiding place. And so no human being can break the bonds of Satan unless he invites Christ to dwell in who is the victor of all the world's problem. Christ is waiting to bestow upon his church the latter rain his own spirit, the impartation of himself in fullness. I don't know, is it uh, early writing 79? Let me see, early writing 79. Those who are uh, receive the, the, the seal of God are to reflect Christ fully, not 79. Early writing, just type reflect the image of Christ, reflect image. 64.1, is it? No. Not that one. I need the 71.1, 71.1. Write down 71.1, early writing, EW. And then write down 64.1. So let us start with 64.1. And then we go to 71.1. 64.1, whoever there? Sixty-four point one. Yes. So when the third angel's message starts uh, 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 sounding, there is a great work to be done, but in a little, a little time, there will be a dying of self than it has ever been. Then she says in 71.1, I also that, saw that, I also saw that many do not realize what they must be in order to live in the sight of the Lord without a high priest in the sanctuary through the time of trouble. Those who receive the seal of the living God are protect and are protected in the time of trouble must, not may, must do what? The image of Jesus how? Fully. Is it possible? Yeah. He has said in a Christ object lesson 333.1 that his biddings are his enablings. And when humanity combines with divinity, humanity becomes omnipotent, which means that we can do everything through Christ who strengthens us. And so brothers and sisters, there's a call, but who will accept the call and who will accept the challenge? This is the third angel's message in verity sounding to the world. And it is inquiring who will receive this justification. It is for the old and the young to arise and walk in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That God may give us the power to keep his commandments and walk in purity. When the sinner believes that Christ is his personal savior, then according to his unfailing love, failing promises, God pardons his sin, his sin and justifies him freely and he becomes a substitute and a surety for the sinner. Imagine, Christ becomes a substitute and surety. 
Now, do people understand what is a shortage? Let us talk financial language there. How many do finances? Who is a shortage? What is a shortage? When you become a shortage for someone, what does it mean? That if this person defaults to do anything, they are coming for you, not even for the person. So in this message that Satan is trying to obliterate, who is he going against? No, he's going after Christ. And when he was going after Christ, he was going after the Father. Because he has said, the claim of the devil is that no one can keep the commandments of God. So when he attacks the saints, he is attacking Christ. And in the end, he's attacking the Father, the author of the law. And so here we are told that when a believer believes, when a sinner believes in Christ, Christ becomes his substitute and surety. And that is why you find Christ standing before the Father and saying, my blood, my blood, and he cannot come. While the people expect to stand for them have not stood. And so we are told in, uh, in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 6 that uh, actually we put the nail afresh in the wounds of Jesus Christ when we sin. Is it? Yeah. A land that receiveth rains and only bringeth stones. It's like a person just putting the nail of, uh, in the fresh wounds of Jesus Christ. His wounds are fresh. His blood still speaks. And so we have to bring an end of suffering. By the way, sometimes we talk about sin and we say that it is humanity suffering. Do you know that actually sin is the suffering of the Father and the Son and atonement to the holy angels who have never seen? They see what is happening and they say, how long will these things continue? In fact, even it was not, uh, let us read that verse. When we talk about those who suffer, Daniel chapter eight. You know, sometimes we become so careless about issues to do with salvation. Well, actually the angels themselves are pained with these things. Daniel chapter eight. Daniel chapter eight. Look at uh, verses 13. Yes. So what is happening in Daniel chapter 8 is that uh, the little horns comes and start trembling the sanctuary, is it? Is it? And the camas there in. And it goes on trembling the sanctuary until an angel says, turns to Jesus Christ and asks, hey, no, how long should these things go on? He's tired, he can't continue beholding the sin. And he asks Jesus Christ, tell me, how long shall these things continue? And that's when Christ turns and says, unto 2,300 days, and then the sanctuary shall be justified. You see how angels go through a pain to see sin continue. While the people who are to be saved are so indifferent to the work that is going on in the heavenly sanctuary. But the angels are so alarmed with what is going on. And so what does the Christ do? In the daily sanctuary, in the, in the sanctuary services, we had what we call the daily and the yearly, is it? The, dear, the, the, the daily, uh, what happened is that a person sinned, they came with a lamb and they, it was offered and the blood was taken into the sanctuary. And so morning and evening, this service was going on in the daily, is it? And then Christ sees what is happening in the daily and he says, no, I'll take up the yearly now. I don't want people to continue sinning, is it? I'll take up the yearly. And what was in the yearly victory over sin? I'll offer myself once and for all and give them victory so that they do not continue coming in, sinning and repenting. In fact, uh, if we will understand uh, what actual sinning and repenting is, we will say we don't want to continue sinning. Look at this. Uh, it is uh, in uh, uh, 
this is a sinning and repenting oh let me see if i find it this is a final sentiment that this issue of sinning and repenting it is becoming an abomination to god I'll give you the, the, the quote later, but he talks about we shouldn't be do, continuing in such, in sinning and repenting. It, it has become, it becomes an abomination to God. And so, What we like to say in closing is that uh, all who accept the third angel's message might show by their practice that actually they have received the message. All who accept the third angel's message. And what is the third angel's message? Justification by faith. They may show by their practice that they have received the message. That uh, we will come to a point we don't have to send our sins above in the sanctuary above. Failure to enter into this experience is to miss heaven. It is to, uh, to defeat the redeeming power. And unless this experience is gained, the believer will only have a theory of the doctrines and forms of activities of the message which will prove a fatal mistake and lastly, his ruin. And so if we will claim that we have the third angel's message, then we must walk in it. May the Lord be with us and give us strength to walk in the message. Let us pray. Abba Father in heaven, thank you so much because you will want to pour thy glory, even the spirit that will enable the church to proclaim this message to the whole world. You say that this glory has to go to the whole world. And as it seems, Lord, it's, as it stands, it seems that no one is ready to go with this message because there are still cherished idols in our lives. We pray that you may give us power, you may have mass upon us, you may stretch your hand once again to save us, that, Lord, we may walk in newness of life. Lord, take our hearts and seal it for the courts above, for we cannot give it, Lord. We don't have strength even to approach thee, but you say, come boldly, so we come, knowing that you are our Father, and you are able to do more exceedingly than we can ask of. And so thank you for the acceptance this morning. And thank you, Lord, as we prepare for the final events that will not leave us alone, as you have promised Jesus Christ that you will be with us until the end of the age. Be with us and help us appropriate the merits of the blood. Thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.